Okay, today's video is going to be about the Shadow Knight class, EverQuest 2. This is definitely one of my favorite classes coming from EverQuest in the old days. And I actually really like how uh, Sony in implemented the Shadow Knight in EverQuest 2. So pulling up the alternate advancement tree, the Crusader is what a, the subclass of the Shadow Knight is. And he gets a lot of abilities that are mainly around DPS. There's some tanking abilities as well, but a lot of it is centered around basically increasing your attack speed, crit chance, um, ability cooldown, shortening, lowers your cooldowns, you get some basically some very basic melee attacks. Um, that was a warping attack. You get trample. Um, that adds like an AoE attack to your melee. And you just go on down these trees, uh, the higher ground increases your defense. Obviously that's important. Even though I'm playing more of a DPS spec like most people do, I decided uh, defense was good to have. Lance is basically a, a area effect attack, which is a snare as well. And so basically when you're tanking, you're generally trying to get aggro and hold aggro from a bunch of enemies at once. Um, here you can increase your crit chance. This increases your life. Um, there are several abilities that just pertain purely to tanking, but for the most part I've gone towards DPS. Now in the Shadow Knight tree, what I found was the absolute defining ability was Reaver. What Reaver does is all of the spells you cast are going to heal you. So for whatever damage you do, you're going to get a heal back for the damage that you've done. So that means when you're watching the fights later on, you're going to constantly see this green text popping over me. And that's going to, those numbers are going to be heals that are just constantly coming in. So to me, this is more in line to what the Shadow Knight was, in my mind, in classic EverQuest. Like I pictured the Shadow Knight would be utilizing a lot of life taps and his ability to steal life and heal himself in combat as a means to tank and it would be his way of kind of shortening his downtime between fights etc etc but it really works much better in practice in EverQuest 2 uh, it's definitely designed to increase your your overall toughness your solo ability it lessens your downtime and basically all these skills here are stuff that I kind of made a decision on like I've got quite a few AA points on, on this character and which is pretty good because he's only like level 40 so um, I definitely racked up a lot of AAs and I love AAs I, and I love how you can start building AAs like as soon as you get to like I think it's level 20 10 or 20 I can't I think it's 10 actually I can't remember for sure but um, so there I'm using my it's basically the uh, attack that warps you to the enemy and obviously that's handy that's definitely a very uh, World of Warcraft war, warrior type of ability so now I've got a group of enemies around me and you'll see that I'm doing a lot of AoE attacks and I love AoE who doesn't and how can you not like a melee class who does AoE spell damage I mean just big damage and I went for uh, I can craft weapons and armor. I think actually he's mainly weapons. And so naturally I went for a katana. I love the katana graphic in this game. It's just really, it looks really good. And it, it just fits. Um, I've got kind of an Azen Shadow Knight kind of vibe going here. So to me it's just right. These mobs, they're, you know, probably five or six levels below me, roughly. They're green. They're not considered generally much of a challenge. But for the purposes of questing and, you know, kind of moving along in the game, and I don't use mercenaries. I mean, 
Mercenaries are an option in EverQuest too, but I'm like, what What do you need a mercenary for, really? I guess if you're doing dungeon content, you need a mercenary, but just for everyday stuff, I mean, if you put your, if you use your A's right, if you use your skills right, and you're careful about what you're doing, I mean, you're gonna mow down mobs like crazy. I mean, you don't need to have any extra damage. Now you'll notice this guy wearing black next to me. He is a squire. He doesn't come up as any like entity that I can use for any kind of interaction as far as I know. It could be he's for selling items. I just I can't remember because I made this character quite a while ago, like years ago, literally. And I can't remember what his purpose actually was. I mean he it was like sometimes he like it seems like if I remember right he carried like kind of a banner around but for the time being I'm not really sure if he has any purpose at all that I could use him for I just haven't I haven't messed with it enough but if you look to the left uh, starting at the top of my buff tree or I guess it's not buff tree but my buff bar NRX caress summon squire summon squire I need to look into it but uh, Dark Blade, Reaver. Obviously, Reaver is the talent I picked, which you can see the green ticks over my head represents the healing from Reaver. Uh, Grim Harbinger, Unholy Strength, Unholy Hunger. All of, Most of those are pertaining our DPS buffs. Now, you can go around and you can pick and buff yourself for tanking specifically. Of course, you're going to get less damage. And I think overall, just like most people, I'm here to do damage anyway. So, you know, if I was in a grouping situation, if I was doing a dungeon, I had a healer, or it was a situation where I knew I was going to get my clock clean, I might use a sword and shield. Now, the sword and shield type of gameplay, it's always something that it's always like it's an option but hardly anybody ever wants to do it because it's like why do I want to get my DPS by using a one handed weapon but obviously if I was in a dungeon and I was trying to tank and you know take that forward roll where I'm going to be taking a beating then yeah I would go for a shield and, and I, I'm sure the shield and uh, sword and shield graphic and the effects and the combat animations are all great but I definitely am more of a DPS type of player even when I'm playing a tank but it seems like I mentioned in another video it might have been my Shadow Knight video where I was like or not Shadow Knight sorry <laughs> Beast Lord video for EverQuest 2 and I was like um, I wasn't like I had tried my Shadow Knight earlier and, I, and compared to the Beast Lord I wasn't that impressed but like here these guys are blue they're not extremely tough type of mobs, you know, kind of average mobs, but still, the fact that I can just noob them down because I don't really know what I'm doing as far as attacks. I mean, I have a basic idea, but practically all of my cast buttons are all damage, and I've, I've already worked out ahead of time. You know, I'm basically going to be doing as much damage as I can. But like this spell... The, the spell I have assigned to Alt F4, that's the, the blue ghost looking key in my cast bar, that's an AoE. So, in practice, you're basically casting area effect disease, direct damage, uh, damage over time spells, and all of these spells are going to be healing you while you're in combat. So you're getting real time healing as you're going along. So it's like double the punishment, not just are you cranking out massive AOE, but you're also healing yourself in the process. So that keeps you on your feet and, you know, keeps you going in between fights. You don't have much downtime. But I decided to kind of push forward into the Ferrat and uh, just kind of check it out. There's some, li there's more Lizardmen up here and I'm going to do a number on those guys. But now this warping attack was funny because... At first, like the first couple times I use it here, it worked as described. It, it teleported me to the target. But later on when I use it, it doesn't. It just it, it just pulls a mob. It aggroes it and it comes to me. So 
I'm not sure if it's bug, if if terrain maybe is an issue. I don't not really sure, but it doesn't really matter to me. It's not like if I was in PvP, yes, obviously I would want to be teleporting. But in PvE it doesn't really matter. I mean you're just you're gonna hit your um, uh, aggro ability and it's gonna pull and it's a ranged attack basically, so I don't really mind. Now the Shadow Knight can use a bow and arrow, and at first I was like, yep, gotta get a bow and arrow. I was a I had a classic EverQuest mentality. And then I realized I have all these ranged attacks. I was like, there's no need for even having a bow and arrow. So I kind of dropped it off of my list of um, spell bar abilities pretty quick. And here again, the graphics in, in, in spell effects in EverQuest 2, they're totally sufficient. I mean, they're just as good as, as really most current games. I mean, some, the animation and the field of combat, like right here, I'm fighting this <laughs> wasp, but I didn't even, or a dragonfly, and he was above me. I didn't even realize it, but I really like how your character automatically turns towards the enemies and kind of locks onto them. I've always, I always like that mechanic, even though some people would say it's it's noobing the gameplay, but to me it's just really, I don't know, it just works. I like it. I like how he's just automatically facing his target. Sometimes you have to scroll the camera around to adjust. But I think it was a really good mechanic. And these guys, these lizards, they, they have mass aggro. And it's like, and they have a stun attack, which is annoying. But Dark Cloud, yeah, that's AoE. That's what you do as a Shadow Knight in Earth Quest 2. You just lay down fogs of disease and, and put down good damage. I mean, you can. Look at those numbers. At this point, I've, I'm pretty fearless. I'm just going to dive into this whole group and just start working them down. But again, the uh, combat animations, I, don't, I, I think it's really actually very well done. And not to get off topic, but I think a, a lot of times with games like EverQuest 2, the, the development phase, um, Daybreak or whoever it was back then I was in, they wanted <clears throat> for some reason to have for you to have a zillion combat abilities, and I, and I feel like it really would be better if it was consolidated down. I like all these attacks. I mean, it, it looks great, it, it's neat to have tons of spells to cast, but ultimately it's like I've got about as many cast buttons as I do buttons on my keyboard. So it's like, couldn't you just kind of narrow it down and consolidate spells, put them on a short cooldown? You know, I, to me that would have been a better way of doing it. But like that skull that comes up over your head, I love it. There was an AoE multi attack. He just shot like this magical green glob of disease. I love it. <laughs> I'll help you in return. Okay. See there, that was my teleport attack, and he obviously didn't teleport anywhere. But they came to him, that was the whole point of it. I'm good. Lots of heals coming. Now here's a pretty big group. Focusing target very well. I, I can. 
but I don't feel like I really need to. I just kind of keep I keep one mob in play and I just keep hitting my area effect attacks. Swift attack. Melee attack increases the Avenger's attack speed if it strikes an enemy. So yeah, that's definitely a good opening spell because it increases your attack rate by percentage and it lasts for about 20 seconds. That's definitely how you, what you want to use to open a fight. Insidious Whisper. Adept. It's a taunt, disease damage, and disease DOT. Single target. I was kind of debating about whether I wanted to keep it where it was in its rotation. 296, 446 disease damage. Okay, so that's single target. So it looks like what I was doing when I set up these um, icons originally was uh, Painbringer. Okay, so that's like a life tap attack. That's cool. Okay. But what I was saying was, is the second row of buttons, um, spell icons from the bottom, are apparently where my was my AOE setup, and the bottom row is all my single target attacks. But Painbringer, I should probably work on upgrading it. Lance applies snare, area effect as well. Nice. Hammer ground, area effect as well. Knockback. Well, that's pretty good. Fain death. Well, that's... <laughs> haven't had really any need for it yet, but... Anyway. Uh, trample. Caster has 40% chance. Now, is that a spell or a, a passive ability? Its description makes it look like a passive ability. That, yeah, that's... No, that's not Lance. No, it's in the it's in the shadow night tree. I'm pretty sure that's actually a, a passive. No trample. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I don't need it. Why do I have a hop up here? Carrying dregs. Nice. Now one spell I need to find is Harm Touch, because Harm Touch was like the class defining ability in EverQuest Classic. I need to figure out where it is. I guess I've been poisoned. I would imagine anyway. There, there's my hammer down attack. So that was an area effect. It's got a pretty long cooldown. And it's a or a DOT area effect as well. Okay. Good opening spell. Doom Judgment. Judgment. What does it do? Inflicts 366, 601. Dispels beneficial effects. Nice. Siphon Strike. Okay, so that's a healing. One, one, four, three, max. So it does damage and heal. Single target. There he goes again, just laying down fogs of disease. Hate 
triple slam applies knockdown. So I've got two knockdowns, and it's a knockback. Single target, lots of aggro. Devour Vite. Heal. <laughs> so I've got a lot of, like I said, more in line to what I was expecting out of the original Shadow Knight is that I have um, a number of just direct heal or damage and heal attacks, which I imagine if I was tanking, if I was in a dire situation, I would want to be rotating those for sure. Unholy Blessing. The damage is so. Okay, that's kind of... You gotta cast it on a group mate. Siphon Strength. Duration 1 minute 12 seconds. I don't know if that's really important. Blasphemy. Taunt. It's a taunt. Dreadful Wrath. Slows target by... 34% inflicts 495 to 775 <laughs> like it's not enough to just slow the target it's got to do massive damage too shadow coil just a dot basically not very powerful um, unending agony area effect DOT well that's a much better DOT that's about the same yeah, I'm going to move my ultimate up. Cleave Flesh 2. Grave Sacrament. Harm Touch. Oh, yeah. And I've got it at Grand Master. Yes. Heals, heals Caster for 21%. 21 to 26%. Nice. Soul Ring kick I guess so there is no question the Shadow Knight never quest 2 is definitely a lot about life taps and doing damage and life tapping and lots of AOE and disease damage so life tap or I'm sorry harm touch does a massive amount of damage and it's got a short cooldown it's like I would say three and a half minute cooldown probably. So that's pretty good. Um, I really don't have much more to say, really. I mean, I'm I kind of just logged back in after a long time and came back to this to you know kind of get my feet wet and figure out um, how this class plays. And um, it's it's very cool. I mean, even now I'm looking at a very old game and and I'm impressed by the graphics and the overall execution of the gameplay so um, if you have any comments or questions or just an opinion about EverQuest 2 uh, definitely feel free to post them and thanks for watching